Hello, hey, hey, hey. Good evening, everybody. Joel and Sherilyn is here. We are excited to join you this evening. And I get to hang out with my beautiful honey Aww, and talk thank with you, you. guys. Isn't, 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 isn't she looking beautiful right now? Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's right. I'll that's repay right. you. You will pay me. Yeah. All right. I'm with that. I wasn't expecting a payment, but I'll take Aww. it. <laughs> come hey on guys. in. Come on in. Come on in tonight. We are excited to be joined by Good you. Morning. Um, just uh, comment in the comment section. How are you doing? Let us know how you're doing. Let us know where you're looking, where you're streaming from. Um, and uh, just uh, let us know how you're doing. I just want to hear from you tonight. Yes, guys. How's everybody doing? Drop it in the comment section. Yes. Where are you, where are you where from? Are you from? Locating, what's your experience? What's going on in your city? Um, yeah. And um, what you're doing during this time. So let's have a conversation tonight because we're all in it together. And Amen. Um, Amen. tonight's message, um, we just want to share with you what God has put on our heart to Absolutely. share with you. And we just, this is the time where we want you know you to be vocal and speak and, and share. Um, and um, it's an honor yeah. every uh, Sunday that we get an opportunity to come before you guys. It is actually an honor and a privilege. We do not take it lightly. So you guys welcoming us in your home and um, You know spending the time with us. We hope that the information that we share helps you and your family and helping you and as an individual um, Become a better individual, you know to yep. serve God and serve your family Absolutely now, you know, we're all aware that we we're living through um, interesting times and um, we're living through interesting times, and living through interesting times require us to, to, um, to, to, to bone up on leadership. So you know, if you're a parent, um, you know, you lead. Mm -hmm. If you're a spouse, you lead. If you work a job somewhere, you lead. You know, if you've got friends that uh, count on you and they call you to check up on you or they check in. Um, to, to get a little word of encouragement from you, you lead. Mm -hmm. So um, it's important to look at yourself with eyes of leadership um, because a lot of times we don't really, <laughs> we don't really view ourselves as leaders. Right. And, um, and if you don't see yourself appropriately, then you won't be able to execute your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And leadership, like I mentioned last week, is influence, meaning that you have the ability to add value to someone else because they have entrusted you with their heart and their ears. And so leadership uh, is a responsibility because you've been trusted with their, with their mind. They open themselves up to, to, to have you impart to them. Mm -hmm. So tonight we want to talk about, um, you know, defining reality for your family and, and your extended family, friends yeah. and, and, and so on and so forth. Because well, it's your really, really important. Your sphere of influence, you know? Yeah. It's important right now to define reality and I'm going to explain what that means in, in, in a second because it's important for us in times when things are uncertain you know if you don't understand or have some type of a foundation laid as to what is real and what is not then you don't have a clear definition of reality so you could be on one extreme of, of life or the other extreme and we know for a fact that it's all about balance, right? Anything to its extreme mm -hmm. is error. Mm -hmm. Anything done in extreme is error. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us as parents, as, um, as, as employers or employees or friends or whatever title you carry in your community to be able to define reality for those that look to you for some strength and some guidance. Amen? Mm -hmm. Anything you want to share before I jump in? No, just enjoy listening <laughs> to you. Lead on, lead on. <laughs> all right. So, um, hey Brian, how are you? Hey guys. Hey Hazel. Um, so welcome. How are you guys doing? Just just let us know where you are. Where you looking? Where you looking from? Which part of the house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not oh not just part, not just which part of the country, but which part of the house do you reside in right now? <laughs> <laughs> and we hope you guys are all safe and um, passing the time well. So we're open that we add value to get to you guys tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. And so we're talking about defining reality for your family and lead. That's what leaders do because in uncertain times, um, a lot of us don't have a reality. Well, what is reality? We don't know what this looks like tomorrow, mm -hmm. next week. What is it going to look like? You know, um, you know, when are we going to get back to some type of normalcy and that type of stuff? 
And so in times when there's a whole lot of things that are up in the air mm -hmm. and there's a lot of uncertainty, what leaders do is they go back to the foundation and they find what is what never changes. And so the first thing I could tell you um, that I do for my family and my wife and I do for our family and do for each other is to define reality in what is who's in control. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is God is in total control mm -hmm. and God promises us in his word that he would never leave us nor would he ever forsake us. So that's the first thing we know. We know that God is in control and he is not surprised mm -hmm. that we have something called COVID-19 happening, which is defined in the Bible as pestilence, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you read through your Bible and you look for that word pestilence, you'll find it in there so many times that you'll realize that God is not surprised that it's happening again, mm -hmm. right? And so one thing we, can, we, we, we know as a foundation is that, you know what, the good Lord is in control mm -hmm. and then we can move forward from there. But before we get started, I want to talk to us about us having some type of balance and understanding because I see two different sets of people, right, Charlene, on social media. Mm -hmm. um, since we're all quarantined, our association is on social media, <laughs> uh, mainly right now. And on social media, you see uh, two sets of people. You see, and I'm, and I'm not putting anybody down, I'm just observing what I see, right? Two sets of people we see. We see people that um, people of the faith and, and, and so um, they don't care, a lot of people, not, not everybody, but a lot of these people mm -hmm. don't care about what's happening and that there's a quarantine and that the government, you know, re requ requires us to stay indoors or whatever. They're just mad mm -hmm. that, you know, life has changed. And because we're people of faith, this person is saying, you know, God got me covered. I'm not worried about anything. And so this person may not practice prudence, and this person may just be kind of reckless and just say, you know, or throw it out in the air and say, you know, God's got me covered and I don't have to worry about anything. And that's one extreme. The other extreme is um, one that has been watching the news 24-7 and has lost all hope <laughs> in life becoming normal again, has lost all hope and feel like, you know what, we're not going to make it. You know, I'm not going to survive, and this person is in, in fear. And this person is um, in, at a low point right now, and this is the person that, um, hi, Sophia, this is a person that is gripped by fear right now and, um, you know, don't have any kind of hope. Mm -hmm. And it is actually so dangerous that it's going to compromise even their health, their immune system, their mental health, okay? And that's not a good place to be either, Right? So anything done in extreme is error. So I want to read a scripture to you, which is 1 Peter 5 and 7. And I want to break this down so we can have some understanding. Mm -hmm. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting or cast all your cares upon him, him the Lord, for he cares for you. Mm -hmm. So when you're worried, God is saying, you know what? Cast all your cares on me because I care for you. Mm -hmm. if, we, if I read that scripture from the beginning, it talked about, young people or immature people and then that scripture also talked about elders mm. and the elders in that scripture was talking about those who have experienced life and have been through some stuff that the the ones that are inexperienced should humble themselves right and let the elders lead or those that are in charge of leadership or had ex has experience to lead and it even talks prior to, to, to us getting into this about pride and, you know, pride is a spirit of fear. A lot of times we masquerade mm -hmm. um, our fear with pride and we get puffed up and we do weird things when we're in fear and we use pride to mask the fear. And so people may act reckless at times and some people may, you know, act like they don't care, but they're really in fear. Mm -hmm. And so God is saying, don't do that because he will um, oppose the proud, right? But he would help the humble. And then he gets into this part of the scripture that says, well, don't worry about all of that stuff. Cast your cares upon me because I care for you. But I love the balance that God has. I mean, our Father, our Heavenly Father has such wisdom. He says, cast your care on me because I care for you. But he says in verse 8, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion who walketh around seeking whom he may devour. 
So God is saying, don't be fearful. Don't be scared. Um, don't lose all hope and think that, you know, you're not going to make it through this time. You're going to make it. Cast your care on me. But, here's the balance, God, that I love. But, he said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is, a roar, is like a roaring lion who walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And I like the fact that the word may devour was used and not whom, uh, and not seeking to devour everyone. Because the fact that the word may was used means that there's a specific type of person that could be devoured. Not everybody will or should be devoured. Right? Whom he may devour. And I want to refer, I, I want us to talk about the fact that we need to have understanding and we need to have knowledge in these times. And I'm glad that we're having this dialogue so that we can, um, you know, inform one another so that you can be in a place where you're growing. We all should be in a place where we're growing in the knowledge and understanding of God and how the world works. Because in times of uncertainty, if we have not been prepared for life, this is where we may stumble. And so, Sherilyn and I, you know, we like to take the time to jump on here and share because we know that in times in our past, and we're still growing, still much to learn and understand, but in throughout our life, we've always been blessed with uh, mentors or guidance. Um, God has always put people in our path that has lived um, uh, successfully. Hey, Lester, what's up, bro? <laughs> God has always put people in our in our in our life that has lived successfully and they were able to impart wisdom to us so that we were able to successfully navigate through difficult situations and difficult times. So mm -hmm. that's the that's the main reason why we like to jump on these lives and share with you, hoping that you know at least tonight you can walk away with something that will give you hope for tomorrow. And give you knowledge and understanding to successfully navigate through tomorrow and the rest of this week and your future. Right? So, let me read 1 Peter 5 and 7 again. God says, casting all your cares upon me, right? Or upon him, for he cares, cares for you. And verse 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion that walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Well, who may he devour? Because he can't devour everybody. I'm going to propose to you Hosea 4, 6, where God says, My people are destroyed, or if you want to throw the word devoured in there, from a lack of knowledge. Mm. So at this point in life, when we have difficult situations like the times we're living in right now, you know, the one... Um, that are going to make it are those that have a knowledge and an understanding of how God's world works, right? The ones that are susceptible to things like depression, that are susceptible, um, those of us that are going to be susceptible to things like, um, you know, um, fear and, anxiety. And, and anxiety, and even those that we pray for that, that may even consider taking their life at this time, um, those are the one, those of us that don't have the knowledge and the understanding are the ones that the devil may devour. Because the fact that that scripture says he's seeking for those he may devour, we have to understand why may he devour them and he may not devour someone else. The reason is once we don't have knowledge and understanding of how things work, then what we do is we fall prey to the traps mm. and the tricks and we walk mm. through doors that we're not supposed to walk through or we open ourselves up because of fear or because of anxiety to things that we should have never been open to. And so that's why we like to jump on here and talk about how do we comport ourselves and how do we define reality for our family and for those we care about so that in tough and difficult times like these, we can all navigate through it successfully. Not just come out on the other end safe, but come out on the other end in a better position than you were even before this crisis. Make sense? Because there's always opportunity wrapped up in every crisis that we face as, as, as a people. You want to share anything on that? I Charlie? find that when we go through challenges, crises, and things like these, it's actually um, a test 
uh, for us to see what we do have inside of us. Mm-hmm. Do we have the right information? What are, do we are we made up with the right right stuff? Mm-hmm. James one talks about you know count it all joy when you fail face various various Trial. trials. Yeah. Um, because the testing of your faith will faith mm-hmm. <laughs> will bring perseverance, the ability to go mm-hmm. through and to um, go through and keep going and live in life in mm-hmm. a strong way. And I think right now, as we are all at home and we're taking some time to slow down, and I love it, a mentor of ours, John Cole, would always say sometimes we have to intentionally slow down to speed up. Absolutely. A lot of us started 2020 with goals, desires, and dreams that we want to see um, or, um, happen, and we never thought that something like this, like a, a challenge like this, would happen so early on in the year. Mm -hmm. But I find that when we have these tests, it's for us to look inside of ourselves. You see, God is a merciful and graceful God. He loves us. And he, the Bible tells us in um, Jeremiah 29, 11, you know, he know, God remember, he remembers the plan he mm-hmm. had for each and every one of you. You know, plans to do you good and not to do you evil. Plans for a bright and successful future. But in the process, we want to make sure that we have the right information inside of us. So how are we responding um, and not reacting, mm-hmm. responding to what is going on in this time? Mm-hmm. You know, do we have a positive outlook or a negative outlook it's okay we, we, we're all very human and yes we have concerns about the future and things we don't you know school when is school going to start for us our son is home from school we pay all this money for him to have room and boarding and we're doing the room and boarding so I'm like okay are they going to work something out here in the future you know and bill for next year is already due so we know that you guys have real situations mm-hmm. and we're not ignorant of that but what all we're saying is, so are we slowing down to really pay attention and listen to what God is actually doing in our life right now? What is the, what is, what is the Spirit of the Lord telling each and every one of us? And one of the things I hey, find Carveta. personally in challenges is that we, um, we look to see if we have what it made of, what, what, what is necessary mm-hmm. to take, go to the next mm-hmm. level. Do we have the proper information and understanding? And um, Joel and I like to talk from spiritual um, ba- um, foundation because everything that is happening and manifesting right now, it was already formulated and happened in the, in the spiritual realm. God already knew this from the beginning, that this point would come, and he already prepared a way. So each and every one of us, you know, we have the ability, whether we're saved or unsaved, to hear the voice of God, mm-hmm. to hear what the Spirit of God is telling us. Because Scripture tells us that um, in the last days, God will pour out His Spirit upon all men. He's not going to just pour out the Spirit on just the just or the Christians or this type of people, on all men. And at this time, are we looking inside of ourselves? Are we slowing down again to see? Because Ecclesiastes 1, 3 also tell, 1 also tells us there's a time for everything under the sun. And this is such a time. You know, mm-hmm. we want to look in the time and say, you know what, what is, what what is, is this, this for? What is this for? Mm-hmm. How is this going to impact my life mm-hmm. personally, our children's life? What does that look like? And, um, and our future, mm-hmm. you know. And um, are we really slowing down and paying attention to the things that God is showing us? I was so blessed. Um, you know, as I go about working, seeing people outside walking and neighbors even talking, they're practicing social distances. But to see all these people be out, families going for walks together, things that you didn't see mm-hmm. often, mm-hmm. you know, and it just gave me such delight. And I said, God, you and your infinite wisdom and your wonderful ways. I hope that people continue this habit. I mm-hmm. hope they prioritize it and not have to be um, pressured from the outside, but they can internally, intentionally slow down to speed up. You know? You know. We like comfort as human beings, right, yeah. Shirley? We like comfort and we like predictability. Mm-hmm. And, um, but who said that that was the way we were supposed to go through life? Whose definition was it that we were supposed to be comfortable and know the end from the beginning and... Um, Know and, and, and know all and things and be God. all things, right? So we're not supposed to. And so when we face a season like this where there's difficulty, we have to realize that it's okay that we have a desire to be in charge and we should be in charge of our life, meaning we have a plan, we're disciplined, we've got you know some focus about ourselves, we know what we want to do today, 
Um, we just don't get up with no plan of what the day looks mm -hmm. like, right? So we should always be in charge, but we should be fine with not being in control. Mm -hmm. Right? Make sense? The, the gap between you being in charge and being in control is, 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 is good for your faith, right? You're in charge. You have an end goal for your life for this week or for, t for today, mm -hmm. but we're not in full control. And that gap right there is for your faith. And so at this point, that's why James 1 talks about, about trials and that it's good for us because it, it produces perseverance, right? It strengthens faith when you um, have trials um, because you need your faith to be strengthened, right? Uh, we need that our faith does not uh, like atrophy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When we go to the gym, right? When we're going to the gym, um, yeah, yeah, Mandy, when we're going to the gym, we experience resistance, right? Which which you can liken to a challenge. But what that challenge that you're putting yourself through at the gym does for you intentionally, it stops your muscles from atrophying and from shrinking, and it helps your muscles to be strengthened, and then it helps your muscles to grow. And so for those of us that are disciplined enough to actually go there and put ourselves through that challenge, we understand the importance of facing that challenge, right? Mm -hmm. And strengthening our our physical body and so that's why the book of James talks about the fact that it's good when we go through various challenges it's not because uh, the challenges are there to destroy you and the challenges are there to make you become hopeless and and fall into a place of anxiety no the challenges are there because just like the gym God is more interested not in your comfortability but God is interested that your faith muscle does not atrophy and that you're not prepared for the next level of navigating. We're all growing up. Mm -hmm. We're all getting older. I'm 41 years old. Because of challenges like this that we're facing right now, we've been through before, I'm able to help my children navigate through this one. You see, if I didn't face any challenges 10 years ago, five years ago, 12 years ago, it wouldn't qualify me to walk my family through this current challenge. So every situation that we face that helps us to increase our faith muscle is qualifying you to lead when the time comes down the road. And, and we can take so many different uh, examples of why it's good to look at this with good eyes and to define reality right now um, but we're not going to go down that road uh, too intensely but we just want you to understand that it's important to know that there is a place that we should all operate from and that is a place of balance and so I love First Peter 5 and 7 that it's telling us yes cast your care on the Lord don't be worried cast your care but at the same time that scripture is telling us be sober be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion looking to see whom he may destroy. So God is saying, trust me, but also don't be naive. Don't be naive. Be vigilant. Well, I learned a few things. Um, let's listen to one of my favorite authors and leaders, um, John uh, C. Maxwell. Mm -hmm. And he talks about, um, there's like 10 values that I love that he talks about in terms of leading. Um, like we mentioned, leadership is influence, and how do we lead our family through these times um, as individuals? First mm -hmm. of all, again, we always said, you know, we we look inwardly. This is a perfect time for us mm -hmm. to start looking inwardly, times with ourselves as we grow and be transformed. The Bible tells us, you know, do not be conformed to the world. Don't be conformed to everything that is going on left and right and center. You are prudent, you are vigilant, and you are sober, but you are making sure that you are not conformed to the things of this world, but be renewed, um, transformed by the renewal of your mind. Mm -hmm. So the dreams and aspirations that we started out 2020 with, now we have an opportunity to see those things come to fruition but in this slow and down moment could it be that God is helping us and one of the values that um, John talks about is um, value today mm -hmm. 
And aren't we seeing a lot of people because they don't have a job or anything that they are they're forced to value their today? Awesome, Mandy. You That's know? awesome book leadership. I'm reading it too. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Good girl. Yeah. Well, one of what, what he's talking about value in today and in Matthew six uh thirty four it talks about do not be concerned about tomorrow because today it um sufficient are the evils for today and yes. I'm paraphrasing. Mm-hmm. You can go to look at it, Matthew six 34 and read it for yourself and basically god is telling you to to value today make the today count look at all the blessings people love to say you know today is the present um so that that's why we focus on today's a gift to us we cannot change what happened yesterday and we definitely know no for sure what's going to happen tomorrow mm-hmm. so let's value today and it's and, and the things that we focus on today tells us what our priorities are and because joel and i our passion is family is uh is marriages mm-hmm. and family uh and children is is uh mm-hmm. we want to to encourage you to slow down and see how we can add value Absolutely. to our spouse today in there he also talked about if you don't mind me going through no, really quick quickly um he talks about um working to serve um others yeah, working to make sure that we're meeting the needs of other people. You know, um, are we having difficulty serving another person? Are we having difficulty focusing on the needs of our spouse or focusing on the needs of our children? When we are in our homes, we're going to see those areas. Mm-hmm. Pressure is going to come upon us and the things that God is looking to strengthen us in or to purge us of so that we can uh, uh, receive those blessings and the things that we started out 2020 with. Mm-hmm. Um, these things are going to be, we're going to see these things. And we might not like it, but it's okay because growth is not simple, um, is not easy and that is not fun. But when you, when you, when you have this time now mm-hmm. to look inside yourself and see, can I, am I having issues serving my, my, my spouse? Maybe I wasn't getting to the next level because I'm not looking on serving. Because great leaders are, are, are individuals that don't look to, to put themselves on a pedestal. Yes, they have goals and vision, but their goal is to help another person realize their goals and help that person uh, realize their goals. And in doing so, they will achieve theirs. So how are we, am am I as a a wife, helping my husband reach his personal goals? Am I helping our children meet their personal goals? Because when I do, then my success as a wife, as as a mother, is dependent on that. Me fulfilling those those requirements, because again, uh, it was a choice for me to get married. It was a choice for us to have children. And so Mm -hmm. when we we take care of those things that matter to God, God will give us the desires of our heart. Mm -hmm. As the Bible tells, when we delight ourselves in the Lord, He will give us the desires of our heart Mm -hmm. and then of course you have um the at our attitude in these times make being a difference maker Mm -hmm. you know attitude is not everything but our attitude is a difference maker or do we have a positive or a negative attitude to what the situation is and joel started off talking about you know what is it that we're feeding ourselves on a regular basis absolutely absolutely you know um you got to watch what you're feeding yourself because for everybody, defining reality right now for, for your family um, looks different based on what we've been consuming. What have we been feeding on for our entire life? You know, when I think that this opportunity, and I call it an opportunity, is an opportunity for us to create some new habits that we're going to carry with us for the rest of our lives. Because the next time we face a challenge, um, we won't have time to prepare for that challenge when it comes unless we've been working on it before it came Mm -hmm. right they say opportunity um success happens when opportunity and preparedness collides right Mm -hmm. so in a time like this for those of us that got caught off guard and we haven't been really thinking about prudence we haven't really been building our faith we haven't been building our mind with some with positive information so that we can counteract negatives that are coming at us when something like this comes and it happens overnight like this um, it can catch us at, at, at a surprise and it could put us in a bad place where we could lose hope but if we use this time and, and a lot of us are quarantined if we use this time for example to let some of God's word play or let somebody that's teaching a good message um, on YouTube let that play in the background while you're preparing a meal at home 
you know, listen to Proverbs or Psalms, you know, while you're sleeping at night. Let that, let that feed your spirit, mm -hmm. right? Use this time to not just soak up the media and soak up what the news has to say and to listen to the fears of your neighbor all day long. Like I mentioned in my last message, I believe in social awareness, but I don't believe that we should consume three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours mm -hmm. of the news every day. Because whatever you put in will put your subconscious mind or your spirit on automatic. It will put you, uh, when it's time for you to face a challenge, whatever information you have put in you is what's going to automatically begin to come back out and help you to make your next decision. Mm -hmm. And so we got to be careful um, that we're feeding ourselves the right information in these times and, and, and keep that habit as a lifestyle for the next challenge that comes because there will be another challenge as long as you continue to live there will be another challenge the bible tells us and this too shall pass but it's always going to be another challenge that we will face and how we have grown ourselves through this one and if we had maintained that as a habit will determine how prepared we are for the next one and not only that, what would be our results when we come out of this one and when we come out of the next one? And I encourage you guys, record um, the challenge, personal challenges that you have within yourself. Record it for yourself personally and mm -hmm. see how, and, and record also how you overcome. Because you'll see a pattern and you never know this information could help someone down the line. We don't know what God is preparing us. Some of us we did, may not know our purpose or why we're here. They said um, there's two important dates in our life, the day that we were born and the day when we realize what our purpose why is, we were born. why we were born. <laughs> So yeah. when you, you don't know what God is doing for you through this time, so this is why we encourage you to slow down, you know, and take that time to see what he is telling you and make smart choices. Um, it's in the times, the quiet times where we're able to uh, make smart choices, you know, and you may hear things that if we were going to work and we go to the stresses of getting work, getting ready in the morning, getting the children ready in the morning, making sure the children have lunch, everything is taken care of, driving or taking the train to work and be with all the intricacy that happens when you're in the train because your space people are all over your space and dealing with co-workers and dealing with your boss and and deadlines and all this stuff all these things could be so much noise inside of our our our, our life and maybe we did not have a pattern of of intentionally slowing down and quieting those things but now is an opportunity mm -hmm. for us to really see how we can um, manage our own self and include that so that when things start to happen, when you come out of this period, mm -hmm. that you're able to make smart choices that will make a difference for, for your life. I love it what um, Maxwell said. He said that we're doing two things in life when we're, we're, getting, we're on the road to success. We're either, um, when after we make a decision and set a goal, we're either preparing or we're repairing. Mm. So are we preparing for our, our, our future or those goals that we started in 2020, whether it be our family goals, um, uh, relationship goals, financial goals, uh, uh, purpose-driven goals, whatever those goals, are we preparing? Some of us may have started um, even um, health goals and we didn't really start it off. We didn't really get into a routine, but now we have, I see on social media, people have great things going on. They're cooking, they're showing exercises, people are sharing their gifts with exercising. My friend um, Eva, that has a dance school here in Jackson, she's good, giving, showing exercises. We have friends with financial um, background that are sharing uh, financial information. Mm -hmm. There's so many people that are sharing what it is that they're good, they, they love doing, and they never had the chance to do that. So. I just want to encourage you guys to really, really, in this slow down time, to really look and see what is going on in this quiet, uh, quiet time. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, Sherilyn and I and many of you on this live are people of faith. Mm -hmm. And, um, you, know, you know, we work with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is uh, one of the promises of the Holy Spirit is that he would bring to remembrance all that you have put into you. Oh, right? I forgot the repair part. 
Right. I said we're either preparing, mm -hmm. you know, um, managing our steps each and every day mm -hmm. to get to our goals, you know, remembering our goals, remembering the, the different steps in our goals, um, and um, we're, or, or we're repairing. Mm -hmm. We reach a point and then we're like, oh my gosh, 2020 is over and we didn't really get to do. But in the past, we've done so many things that wasn't right, and now we have to spend the time repairing what um, we didn't get to get done. Get Sorry. done. Absolutely. And so I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning the fact that now those of us that are people of faith and um, we work with the Holy Spirit yeah. the Holy Spirit promises to bring to remembrance those things that you've deposited into yourself already mm -hmm. which means that if you have not done anything for you mm -hmm. if you have not put in the Word of God into you if you haven't been reading listening if you have not been spending time with God the Holy Spirit has nothing to work with right what I love about the Spirit of God, though, is while you've been reading the Word of God, listening to messages and all of that type of stuff, when difficult times like these come, your spirit will inform you of things that you don't have tangible information to make decisions on. You may not know how to, um, you know, exactly what's going on in our country uh, mm -hmm. Politically, you may not know exactly what's going on in our country with this COVID thing. You may see some things on the news um, that may disturb you. Um, some of us um, like uh, how uh, this whole shutdown is working, and some of us don't really agree with all that's happening and all the decisions that are being made. But that is not our job. I want you guys, I want to ask you to go read um, Romans 13. Because Romans 13, especially in this time, Romans 13 is an entire chapter in the, in the book of Romans that talks to us about our responsibility as citizens to obey the, 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 the government, mm. right? A lot of us may not like exactly, hey, what's up, Jose? A lot of us may not like exactly how, um, how you know, they're, they're, we're being quarantined or we may not like exactly that our favorite store has to close or the fact that business owners I'm one of those to be honest <laughs> <laughs> or the fact that business owners have to close their businesses and they're losing revenue and all that. these are all concerns that all of us have and they're all legitimate concerns but those were decisions that were sanctioned by our government right well if we are true believers and we read Romans 13 and we actually say we believe God and we trust God, then guess what? If we go against Romans 13, we're not just disobeying the government. We're actually mm -hmm. going against God. Mm -hmm. So it's important. I'm saying all of this to say it's important that as we live our lives, that we take the time to learn, mm -hmm. to learn. How does God want me to operate during seasons like this? How does God want me to operate when I don't have a choice right now and I have to do this? Mm -hmm. You know, what does God say about these seasons? Go in your Bible, go in your, go in your Bible and find out what does God say about this season? Because when you do that, you give the, the Spirit a chance to now be able to discern and help you discern better when climates like these happen. And it'll help you make great decisions. Even family business decisions in tough times. Because you have filled yourself with the Word of God, giving the Holy Spirit a chance to work with you through difficult times. This is where God begins to, to help you navigate. Not just out of a tough time, but help you navigate to your next level. Mm -hmm. To your promotion. Mm -hmm. But we can't do anything about that if we have not informed ourselves about the Word of God and the rules of God and how God operates. Make yeah, sense? Well, last week we were talking about when um, uh, God gave me the insight of Proverbs 28, 9 mm -hmm. that says, He that turn away, uh, turn his ears from his commandments, even his prayer shall be abomination in, mm -hmm. God's, in God's ears. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us could be faithful and um, righteous individuals and praying, but we're not seeing the manifestation mm -hmm. of our prayer because we regard things like we're violating his commands, you know, mm -hmm. things like not listening to the instructions and obeying, you know, um, 
social distancing and obeying, washing their hands, and goodness gracious, I'm so glad for the, um, the, 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 the stores now giving people the order that you take what you need in the stores, you know, and people obeying that and not being upset, but understanding that sometimes these things have to be in place because we, some people don't have self-control. Right. And that's why we're so, so, so That's why it's important to love your neighbor as, as yourself. yourself. Because yes. when you do, you leave them a roll of toilet paper. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. And, um, you know, you're considerate of, you, you, you know, because when we, when we affect our behavior, don't just affect us, it affects everyone else Absolutely. around us. Whether we think we're insignificant, that's what we said, you are leaders. And leadership is just means influence, and we do have a sphere of influence, whether we believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, but how, what we do with that influence uh, is is the difference maker. The Bible also say in in Psalm fifty six eighteen, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear our pra uh, my prayer. Mm -hmm. And that's again, a lot of us are praying, but we will not see the things because God is not going to violate His laws. God cannot break His own laws. No matter how much he, we love you, he loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son, but he will not violate his laws because his word is even above his name. And so, this, what, what are the things? The slow down part, looking inside ourselves. Maybe God is telling us there's some behaviors and habits that are uh, really, really making, causing us not to live in God's best for our, our own goals. We believed him. A lot of people started off fasting in a year with dreams and goals and desire, believing God for stuff, and they're confessing every day on there or every week, but they're not seeing it or it seems like it's not God is not listening. But it's not that he's not listening it, but because we regard certain iniquities in our heart. We might be unforgiving to others, we might be gossiping and bickering and lying about other people, we could be jealous of other people, we could be um you know, self righteous. Um, in certain ways, you know, and of course, you know, the biggest, biggest one, I'm not, I'm no politician, but I see people losing friendships and possible friendships over party alliances, you know, um, they're worshiping men so much, and then they're losing the, the sight that this person, you're called to love your neighbor as yourself, or mm -hmm. your friend, or your family member, mm -hmm. and here there's a division, you get together as a family, um, to have a good time, and because of party differences, we're arguing. Mm -hmm. You know, guys, all these things we have to look inside at this time. Why Why is all this thing happening, and what is God um, trying to do in our lives? Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, we just wanted to jump on here tonight. Yeah. Um, Sherilyn and I wanted to take the time to let you know we love you, we love and we, we love uh, family, we love um, marriage, we love community, and we love to see God's best happen for couples yes. and their families. families, and so when difficult times like these happen, um, we feel like, um, you know, it's important that we know what needs to be done, and we understand, you know, how God wants us to comport ourselves to not only navigate out of tough times like this successfully, but what does God want us to do so that we can even take advantage of the opportunities that are that are wrapped up in these challenges? Right. So and tonight, Sherilyn and I just wanted you to remember First Peter 5 and 7, God saying to us, cast all your cares upon him, right? Because he cares for you, mm -hmm. right? God is saying, don't worry. Don't let this uh, time or this season put you into a place of hopelessness and despair. Cast your cares upon me, but I love a balanced God because verse 8 says, but be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion walk, who, that walketh about mm -hmm. seeking whom he may devour. And the fact that God used the word may devour means that he doesn't mm -hmm. have the ability to devour everybody. He only devours those that he may devour, which means that there's some things that if you're not aware of, you are prey. Mm -hmm. You are his open lunch. Game. You're open game. And so tonight we just wanted to jump on here and talk to you about the fact that, you know, you got to cast your cares upon God. And I spoke to you earlier this week in a short message while I was at work about the fact that we've got to guard our hearts, right? The Bible tells us to guard our hearts, Proverbs 4.23, because out of our hearts, 
disclose all the issues of life. And so guard your heart. Don't let too much of the negative in that is going to create anxiety and fear. Mm -hmm. Yes, be socially aware. Yes, know what's going on. Yes, know what's happening in your community. But after a couple minutes of getting that information, shut it down and move towards pumping yourself with information that will build your faith and put you in a position for the Holy Spirit to be able to use all that good stuff you've put in to help you navigate to not just successfully getting out of this season, but getting you to your next level when you come out. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for those of us that, you know, really hunker down to not just come out without the scar, but come out bigger and better than you were, not just in your mind and in your spirit, but also in prosperity, also in in, in things that God had in store for you even before the beginning yeah, of time. Better relationship, you Bet know, better relationship not only with your spouse, but better relationship with your children, mm -hmm. um, helping your children learn how to overcome uh, difficult moments as well. And remember, uh, we, we the, the Word tells us that we train up a child in the way that they should go. When Absolutely. they get older, they will not depart from it. You know, again, in this time uh, that we're slowing down to speed up, you know, uh, we can improve on our parenting. Are we helping our children and modeling mm -hmm. by our own behavior and our leadership mm -hmm. um, the ways of how our children can handle anxiety? You know, are we neglecting uh, the, the, the important information? Are we using prudence and wisdom? Are we encouraging our children to this moment? Um, are we taking interest in what they're interesting? Are we getting to listen to them and talk and get to know our children more? Um, and, and what they're all about if they're having difficulty and challenges. You know, these are moments and times for us to really, really improve on a lot of our relationships. And uh, again, mm. you know, Joel and I, over the course of the time, our goal is to prepare ourselves and uh, to be able to bring you guys. And, and again, that's why we ask, you know, keep on sending us questions um, um, uh, about parenting, uh, peer um, a relationship, any kind of question, any challenges that you're having going through this period. If we don't know, we'll find the information and lead you to the information, the person that do have the answer. But mm -hmm. it's the information time for us to help each other grow and come mm -hmm. out. Because guess, yeah, guess what? When you, when when we help make things happen for you, you know, you're going to in turn help other people. So Absolutely. the goodness will only have a ripple in effect. So Absolutely. don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't, no question is stupid. I always tell my children since they were young, there's no dumb questions. The only dumb questions are the ones that are not asked because it keeps you in darkness and it doesn't help you to propel yourself to the next level. Absolutely. So please, we are open here. Ask questions. Let us help each other. Um, because we've been helped so much, you know, and to whom much is given, much is much expected. Is expected. Absolutely. So we're going to close out tonight. I'm going to ask Sherilyn to pray um, for your family, to pray for um, your business. Uh, for those of you that are in mm -hmm. business, uh, run your own businesses. Um, it might be a challenging time. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pray that God will help you navigate through these times and uh, bring you out not only successfully, but stronger. Um, so let's let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we bless your name because we know that you are the Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end and a loving Father. None of this is a surprise to you, Father God, but because when you start and started, when you ended the world, when you started the world, you've already ended it, so you knew, and you said, you beloved, I pray that my people prosper and be in good health as their soul prosper. Okay. And so, Father God, your word said to remind you of your word. So today, we come together with, with um, uh, you said, we're two or more gathered in your presence, there you are. So we thank you for being Jehovah Shammah, God, who is the God who is there, and Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you for being in our presence. Thank you for never leaving us, nor forsaking us. And you said also where two or more can touch and agree on anything on earth, you will make you will make happen for us. So Father God, we believe in your word. I extend my faith now knowing that God, Lord God, what we ask for, we will receive. And so Lord God, we thank you that you remember your plans for each and every one of your children, businesses, this life, all our friends and family, community, leaders, our school teachers, our um, LK workers, our business owners. I thank you, Lord God, that you remember the plans for each and every one of your children plans to do them good and not to do them 
evil. Plan for a bright and successful future and a hope. And I thank you, Lord God, that that hope will be birthed through now. Your word said that you've given us the authority that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatever we lose on earth is loose in heaven. Father God, we bind the spirit of fear because it is written, you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I thank you, Lord God, that focus is, is your children. If your children have clarity of mind and understanding. I thank you that revelation knowledge will be their portion. I reject and cancel the spirit of darkness and confusion now and that they will have the hope of glory uh, um, of, of glory we thank you that father god that they will have strength to be able to do the things that the spirit of the god of the lord is telling them right now lord god we thank you that as they seek ye first your kingdom and your righteousness that all will be added on to them because you are jehovah jireh their provider so their house their houses households are provided for thank you lord god that you jehovah rapha their healer we thank you lord god that each and every person is healed healthy and whole we thank you lord god that no evil shall befall them and no plague shall come near their dwelling thank yes, you that they were out there are without spot or blemish intercessors the righteousness of you saved and washed in the blood of jesus thank you that you've sanctified them and you've saved them we plead the blood of jesus christ over every house top lord jesus and i thank you that you will give their in give them in the, give your angels charges over them to bear them up lest they dash their foot against the stone because each and every one of your children have their own uh angel as it is written that the angel would take up their case according to your instructions so we thank you lord god that they will just look to when they look to the right and to their and a thousand may fall to their um, right hand but no harm will come near their dwelling so we thank you father god that your people will flourish we thank you that your people will be healed and whole and protected and covered we thank you that they're sanctified in you i thank you that they will also grow in the things of you that they'll be not conformed to this world but be renewed by the um transformed by the renewal of their mind thank you lord god that the just and live by faith so that your children will live by faith Father God, we thank you that every household is protected. No weapons forged against your people will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against them in judgment, I condemn now. It is in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus we pray. And everyone say, Amen. 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 We pray on the full armor of God on yes. you and your family so that you'll be able to stand against yes, the wiles of the enemy, enemy in, in these, these days. evil days. Yes. So we thank you for joining us tonight. And we are looking forward to speaking to you. Um, share this message if it's uh, been a blessing to you. And we'll talk to you next week. Love you guys. Love you guys.